This is a special week, and we're talking about the ultimate for all of us. Where do we go after we die? What about heaven? What about hell? What does the Bible say? And what about people who've actually been there? Well, we've got firsthand testimonies. But according to a Harris poll, 69% of Americans believe in hell, but only 1% think they're going to go there. They're going to have some people very surprised. But do they believe in a literal hell of fire and brimstone? Bill Weiss does. He says he spent 23 minutes in hell. November 22nd, 1998, was a typical night for Bill and Annette Weiss. They spent the evening with friends, then came home and went to bed around midnight. About three hours later, Bill felt himself lifted from his bed and hurled through the air. He landed on the hard floor of a prison cell. So a strange story is told in a book called 23 Questions About Hell and also 23 Minutes in Hell. Bill Weiss is here with us. Bill, good to have you. Welcome. Great to be with you, hey. Pat. It's an honor to be with you. All right. You are, you're a nominal church member, I, I guess. Are you more than nominal? You're a dedicated church member? Full time. Full 41 time. years I've been involved in yeah. church and ministry. B before this thing happened to you, though, you, were, you were asleep. Yes, we went to a prayer meeting, came home like any other normal night. Yeah. And I got up at three o'clock in the morning to get a glass of water. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being sucked out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air and I landed in this actual prison cell in hell. Rough hewn stone walls, bars, uh, filthy, stinking, dirty prison, like a dungeon. Yeah. Now, this was an out of body experience. This was okay. uh, a vision, okay? Uh, I've never had one like this before, but anyway, it was actually a prison cell, and uh, there were these demonic creatures in this cell. What were they like? Reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over their bodies. Yeah. Uh, these particular two were about 12 or 13 feet tall. There's even scripture for that, but... Um, Did they look like anything that you've ever seen a picture of? Yes. <clears throat> they ha they, there are some depictions that are pretty accurate. Uh, one was in uh, Dr. Kenneth Hagin's testimony that uh, John Osteen's church showed about a demon that he saw, Dr. Kenneth Hagin. What did they do to you, or did they do anything? They were, first of all, they were blaspheming and cursing God. They had an extreme hatred for God. All right. They were deformed, twisted, grotesque creatures, and then they directed that hatred towards me. And I wondered, why, what have I done to them? But the one picked me up, threw me into the wall, tremendous strength. I collapsed on the floor. I felt bones broken. Yeah. The other one dug his claws into my chest, tore the flesh open. You have a body in hell, but it can withstand this torment. And uh, they had absolutely no mercy, an extreme hatred for God and for man. No mercy at all? None. No. Not any. All right. When you were in this cell by yourself with these creatures, was there anybody else around? At this point, I was alone, yeah. just with these creatures. And they began tormenting me. I did feel pain, but I understood most of it was being blocked. And the Lord explained to me on the way back that he did allow, allow me to feel some of the pain to relate to people that it's not metaphorical or allegorical. It's not a state of the mind. It's real literal pain you're going to feel in hell. Well, what about the lake of fire thing? Were you, was there fire somewhere? Yes, I was taken out of the cell and I was placed over next to this large raging pit of fire. Mm -hmm. This pit was not the lake of fire talked about in Revelation 2013 through 15, but it's the current hell, Sheol. And this, this pit was just a huge ca uh, hole in the ground with flames raging high up into this open cavern. And again, it wasn't metaphorical or allegorical, real literal flames. And Pat, this is where I could first see people. There were people literally inside this pit burning. It's the most awful sight to see a person on fire, burning, screaming. The screams were so loud from just millions of people at the top of their lungs screaming. What were they, what were they saying? Nothing. They, you just can't screaming. say anything. You're, You're just agony. screaming in agony. There's no conversation. You don't get to be with people. You're kept isolated and apart. And the, the demons are tormenting people. Uh, you, you have no conversation. The, the smells are so foul and putrid, the most disgusting odors. And you're actually breathing in sulfur. And uh, mm. sulfur that's burning is actually toxic. So I wondered, how could it be alive breathing this toxic, foul air? But you continue living. 
uh, there's not enough air to breathe either. So you have to fight and gasp for even the tiniest bit of oxygen. What about water? No water. There's not a drop of water. I, I was so thirsty. Just a drop would have been precious like the rich man wanted in yeah, Luke 16. Yeah. But you'll never get that drop. That, that rich man's still waiting for that drop. Well, well those people, you know, you'd think that they would uh, expire, that they would die. But apparently they can't die. The body you're equipped with in hell it, you live forever because, you know, we're made eternal beings yes. in God's image. And so our soul is eternal. It won't die. You know, like the burning bush. Remember, mm -hmm. you saw it burning and it didn't, wasn't consumed. That's something like what it's like in hell with your body. It can withstand these torments. And you want to die. I wanted to die, but you can't die. You know, that's the most horrible thing when you think about it, just to think that there's no end, that there is no end. Well, Pat, that was the worst part. I understood that. I'll never get out, uh -huh. never. And to know you'll be there for all eternity without hope. You know, Isaiah 38, 18 says, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. You have no hope for Jesus because it's too late for them. The decision's final. And that's really the worst part, knowing you're not ever going to get out. You know, that, that, that just grabs people's hearts. I hope the people listening to your testimony will understand what that is. There isn't anything more horrible where you have no hope, no future, nothing except constant pain and torment forever. It's the most horrible thing. People's minds can't even imagine the horrors of hell. Your mind can't even go there. Any one of these things would kill you. And, and the darkness, I only could see a little bit through the flames, but the darkness is, just consumes any of the light from the flames. It is so dark that you can actually feel the darkness. Exodus 10, 21 talks about a darkness that may be felt. Yeah. So that's not an exaggeration because there's so much evil and wickedness in this place. There is no love of any kind. You understand you're never going to get rescued. There's no angels to protect you. There's no one to talk to. You're not going to get out of this place. No one to talk to. There's no, no fellowship. None. You know. None. You're not going to get out. You're not going to People think they're going to be a lot of their buddies in hell. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way. You're alone. You're alone forever. Forever. And that's why people need to know how important this decision is to make that we have in life here. You know, we serve a loving God. He doesn't want anybody to go to this place. It was made for the devil and his angels, not for man. But man will go there because God loves man so much. He gave him a free will to choose. Yeah. You know, and he said, uh, your own words will condemn you. Did you have finally cry out to Jesus? How would you get out? Well, when I was viewing all this torment and people burning in the fire, I began being lifted up through this tunnel, mm -hmm. and that's where this bright light appeared. Suddenly, this bright light. I knew immediately who it was. I didn't see his face, but I saw the outline of a man standing in this bright, pure, holy light, yeah. like no light I've ever seen. <laughs> and I immediately knew who it was, and I just cried out his name, Jesus. And he said, I am. I, I collapsed at his feet. I don't know if I died, but he touched me. Mm -hmm. And when I came to, I started having thoughts, and he would answer my thoughts. And there was many thoughts. I don't have time to go through them all here. But um, yeah, I, I thought, Lord, why did you send me to that horrible yeah. place? He said, because many people do not believe hell is real. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. Which that statement surprised me because I thought all Christians believe in hell. No. But many of them do not. Sure. They believe in annihilationism or universalism or soul sleep. None of that's true. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, that these shall go into everlasting life and these shall go into everlasting punishment. He used the same word, everlasting, ionios. So just as heaven is everlasting, so is hell. But it's a, it's a place. I mean, a lot of Christians think it's not a place. It's, it's a, a real geographical location. I understood I was down deep in the earth. I understood there were different levels of torment and degrees of punishment. Remember Jesus said, you shall receive the greater mm -hmm. damnation, mm -hmm. inferring there's a lesser. But the point is, there is no comfortable level in hell. They're all horrendous beyond anything you can why imagine. Why were they there? Did you find out why the, the Lord sent these people to hell or they went to hell? They went to hell because they denied Jesus as their personal Savior. Yes. They had the choice in life and they rejected him. Even though God offered himself to people throughout their whole lives, mm -hmm. uh, people on their own, they re reject. The only way is knowing Jesus Christ and repenting of your sins. And if you don't do that, you will end up in this place. And I don't care what you're raised with. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you will end up in this place for all eternity. That's horrible to contemplate. It is. It's horrible. It is the most horrible thing. That's why God wants us as Christians to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want anyone to go to this place. He wept when he saw people falling back in this tunnel that we came out of. 
Uh, it hurts him to see people going into hell. But again, because he loves man, he gives him that choice. He tells you clearly how to stay out of there. Yeah. You know, in Revelation 21, 8 says, all unbelievers shall have their part in the lake of fire. So he tells you, if you don't believe my word, you'll end up there. So it's their own words that condemn them and send them there. What's it done to you after you finish? Because you're only 23 minutes and you came back. 23 seconds would be enough. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> But uh, it's changed my life. I've yes. left my career in real estate. My wife and I travel full time in the ministry just to share information with people. You know, this is not a message of condemnation. This is simply a message of warning. And I explain to people, it's not important they believe my experience. What's important is that they check out what the Word of God has Did to say. Did you ever find out why you were chosen to go there? I have no idea. I'm the least likely. I was not a Billy Graham. I just was a real estate broker going to work. I had my own company. I'm a conservative person. I did not feel comfortable sharing this experience. But the Lord had me share it, and now I don't mind the uncomfortableness because if one person can be led to the Scripture, I'm just a signpost to point people to the Scripture. Were you terrified when you got pulled out of your body? And Were you terrified? I was terrified beyond anything I can ever explain. Uh -huh. And I'm a calm person by nature, yeah. and I know something about fear. I was attacked by a tiger shark, a 10-foot tiger shark, pulled down under the water when I used to surf, and it grabbed my leg. And, and so that fear I experienced then paled in comparison to what you feel in hell. It wouldn't even compare. And there was no end to it. That's There's the no thing. end. No end. Bill, God bless you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this book, by the way, is uh, 23 Minutes in Hell. You want to get it. It's available where books are sold. Let me ask you a question, though. Uh, there was a rich man who said, how about sending somebody back to tell my brothers and Abraham said, they've got Moses and the prophets. If they won't believe them, they won't believe that somebody rose from the dead. But folks, do you believe what's been said? It's in the Bible over and over again. People have been there. They've seen it, and they've come to warn you and to say, you don't want to do it. The, I mean, it's more horrible than I can conceive of. The, the, the thought that there's never an end to it, that, you know, forever and ever, the lake of fire forever and ever and ever is what the Bible says. No end. you you got a body that can't die. You want to die and you can't die. And Bill Weiss is here. He's telling us what's happened to him. Why did God choose him? I mean, he doesn't know. I don't know. None of us know, but he didn't choose him. And he experienced some the horrors of this place. Now, let me ask you this. I'm offering you right now a way to get out of this so that when you die, you will not go to hell. You will go to heaven. You will be in paradise with Jesus. He said about the thief on the cross, this day you will be with me in paradise. Not you will be with me in hell, but you will be with me in paradise. Because he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He believed that Jesus was Lord. Jesus died. This is real. This isn't some churchy thing you do in a Baptist church somewhere. This is real. This is for real. It's not, it's not play games. It's not children's Bible stories. It's real. And it's horrible. But the salvation is beyond measure. And he offers it to you right now. Will you choose life? Will you choose life as God is speaking to you right now? Some of you say, yes, don't wait another minute. So I'm going to take a chance. I'm still living a pretty good life. I'm going to have some parties. No. <clears throat> you don't know when your life's going to end. You don't know. You don't know. It could end like that. Boom. Today, right this second. I don't want that to happen. Do you want to spend eternity with the Lord? Why don't you ask him right now? If you believe in him, he that hears my word and believes on him that sends me, has eternal life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. That's what Jesus said. Do you want that? I want you to bow your head right now, wherever you are. Right now, do it. Families, do it. Husbands and wife, you don't want to be by yourself. Husbands and wife, pray these words. Pray them silently. Pray them out loud, whatever. Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that with me. Lord Jesus Christ. I know you died to take upon yourself the penalty for all the sin that I have ever committed. And right now, I confess that I believe that you died for me according to the Scriptures. And so I ask you, come into my heart. Take over my life. Live your life for me and in me. And from this moment on, Lord, I am yours. Thank you. 
that you've heard my prayer and thank you that you've come into my heart. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to pray for you. For those who pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, fill them with the power of God right now, and may they see the glory of the Lord from this moment on. In Jesus' name, amen.